Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. What are the advantages of an eyedropper fountain pen? Ink capacity, of course. And for clear eyedroppers, the almost zen-like sloshing of the ink inside the pen. What are the disadvantages of an eyedropper fountain pen? Well, they spit. Once the ink level drops, the ink reservoir has both liquid and air in it, and any change in temperature or air pressure will cause the air to expand, expelling the ink. Even just your warm body against the pen in your pocket will make it eject ink in ways that might be difficult to explain. I may not look it, but I'm the future of physics, so just move on. There is a solution, however and it's called a Japanese eyedropper. Opus 88 has a few models with this feature, and this is one, the Opus 88 Bella. There's a rod that goes up through the ink chamber, and you open the ink valve by unscrewing it when you write. This Majon C4 is the latest in a series of clear eyedroppers for Moon Man Majon over the last several years. In no particular order, there was the M2, the C1, C2, and C3, the S5, the Wang Kai, and the Funky Q1. This time, Majon has gone all Opus 88 and created a clear acrylic Japanese eyedropper with this new C4. Let's see how it works and writes right now. <laughs> I haven't done an unboxing for this pen because it came in bubble pack with this eyedropper and this manual. And the manual has nothing about the eyedropper shutoff valve, just the eyedropper itself. But if you really want to see an unboxing, here's the unboxing of my new Guild Starfire 1 electric 12 string guitar. Very exciting. What is it? It's a pen. Oh, it's a pen. Yeah. I knew you were big into pens, but I didn't know the pens were so big. Incredibly big pen. Beautiful. I bet it's not in tune. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I had a real Rickenbacker 12 string years ago, but I had to sell it for mundane reasons. You know, bills, food, diapers, that kind of thing. This guild is no Rickenbacker, but it is pretty sweet. And it's nice to have that electric 12 string chime in my hands again. And while I'm off topic, please join me tomorrow for another Fountain Pen Resurrection Sunday, where I bring an old fountain pen back from the dead. And tomorrow I'll be featuring this stunningly gorgeous wall from the 1920s. It's a beautiful wall metal pen clad in gold with an incredible 14 karat gold wall number four nib but i digress on to more important things like japanese eyedroppers and what i like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample and please stay tuned after the writing sample as i will talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen overall the pen is big here it is next to my jinhao x159 which i'm sure you are aware is exactly the same size as a mont blanc 149 and you can see they're almost identical in size in fact the c4 is slightly longer and here it is next to the moon man m2 and you can see it's dwarfed next to the large c4 and even the moon man c1 eyedropper is smaller than the c4 but the other big differences between the C4 and these others are ink capacity and, of course, the shutoff valve. Because of that shutoff valve, the C4 will have less ink capacity than both the M2 and the C1. But let's look at the pen. It's a large, cigar-shaped, clear acrylic pen with gold metal cap band and a small gold metal clip. From the top, we see the rounded, clear acrylic top finial, which is another great example of the incredibly clear acrylic that Majon Moonman has produced over the years. Look at that. It's just flawless. And you can see how the top finial screws onto the cap and sandwiches the clip ring inside there. Now, if I remove the cap for a second and get up close, you can see that chrome metal washer and the notches 
right there hopefully you can see that those two notches in that chrome washer which are for the tool that put the whole thing together the clip is a very short teardrop shape in gold colored metal and although it's very stiff from being so short it does work both as a clip and as a roll stop the cap tapers up to a wide gold colored metal cap band that has Majon laser etched on the front and through that clear cap you can see that ledge milled into the cap that meets up with the section right there when it's closed to seal that nib from evaporation there's a small step down to the barrel which has a slight taper up to the end finial again in a pristine a clear acrylic and it's the knob to operate the shutoff valve you can see the piston rod inside the clear barrel all you have to do to operate it is unscrew it a couple of turns just a couple of turns like that and that little rubber o-ring disengages from the end nozzle of the section to allow the ink to flow through there's no need at all to unscrew the rod all the way but you can do it and retract the rod this has no function whatsoever once the valve is disengaged with the end of the section nozzle there's no need to keep unscrewing it with the rod fully retracted you can look down inside here and see the two notches in that piston mechanism to allow a tool to be inserted to remove this again i see no reason for that kind of disassembly you might want to add some silicone grease to the rod but you can do that without taking that mechanism out just by adding it while it's out like this the cap unscrews with two full rotations to reveal a large tapering section that has a small flare towards that number six size moon man steel nib let's get a closer look at this nib it has some scroll work moon man the moon man logo and m for medium and there is the black plastic feed the nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews easily for maintenance or replacement and you can see that it has two o-rings this o-ring right here is in pretty sad shape i've had this unit in and out of the pen while i've been reviewing it and that o-ring is pretty frayed so i'm afraid i'm going to have to replace it so i just get out my trusty pen bbs parts bag and pull out an appropriate o-ring pull that old frayed one off and put the new one on there we go and we can screw the nib back down again the section unscrews and you can see there's a, another silicone o-ring right there to keep the section from leaking and this is how you fill the pen you just take your glass eyedropper fill it with ink and drop the ink into the chamber do not fill the pen past these threads right here as you need to allow room for the displacement of the section being screwed back in if you don't you'll be forced to scream eureka and run through the streets naked covered with ink and you may want to add some silicone grease to those threads just to be on the safe side the cap does not post as that cap won't sit on there and it makes it extremely long in any case but unposted the pen is very comfortable in my hand with a girthy lightweight feel it feels very similar in the hand to the Jinhao x159 unposted but it feels slightly thicker in the hand probably because it gets wider back here towards the end where the Jinhao gets slimmer back here towards the end i bought this pen from sally's etsy store easy buy for 27 dollars and 50 cents us it's available in three nib sizes ef f and m i'm glad of the medium nib option from Majon. finally now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the Majon c4 japanese eyedropper with a jinhao x159 an opus 88 bella japanese eyedropper a moon man c1 eyedropper and a pilot metropolitan for scale now let's look at them posted and here they are posted well except for two of them the c4 and the c1 do not post the x159 that's a number eight size steel nib 
These others are number six size, except for the pilot, which is a number five size. Now let's look at them all unposted. And here they are unposted. It's easier to tell here how that C4 gets larger towards the back where the X159 gets slimmer towards the end. And the Opus 88 Bella is fat in the middle. So three variations for you. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And before we write, we have to fill the pen. So let's take the section off, shake up our ink, because this is going to be a shimmer. Get some ink in our eyedropper, and we're only going to fill it to the threads. Put the section back on very slowly, in case I've overfilled the pen. And we're going to release the end knob to allow that ink to flow down into the nib. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Magon C4, and it has a medium steel number six size nib. Let's check the wetness. Well, it's not all that wet, but boy, is this ever smooth. And that is a nice thick line. The ink today that I put in for you, but didn't show you the label, is J. Urbain Kyanite du Nepal with an exile glove. I get asked about this ink all the time uh, because it's the ink in my opening Inquiring Minds Scribble. It's a lovely azure blue that has a lovely silver shimmer to it. And I thought it would look pretty nice sloshing around in that eyedropper. And it does indeed. That's a technical term, by the way, sloshing. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. As to line variation, well, this is a very, very stiff Chinese steel nib. As to be expected, there isn't a lot of line variation. And the line this nib makes on my Richard Binder chart is about 0 0.7 millimeters, which makes it a Western medium to broad or a Japanese broad if there is such a thing and for our quote and some reverse writing It works very nicely. It's a lot thinner and a lot drier, but it's very smooth. And for some quick writing. Yeah, I'm having some skipping issues. Again, this is the first time I've used this nib. Seems to be getting better the more I use it. If I give it a few presses, it improves. So actually, let's check the wetness again. Yeah, so that's improving with use. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? This is another pen that I bought simply to review. I haven't really used any of my previous Moonman eyedroppers. In fact, I bought two M2s and sold one. I bought a C1, an S5, and a C3, and sold them all. So other than this new C4, I only have the M2 and the C1 left. And I don't use those pens very often at all. 
So I fully expected that this new iteration of clear acrylic eyedropper from Majon would go unused after the review. But now I'm not so sure. There are a lot of things to like about this pen. First is the size. I like it. It's big and comfortable. With a number six size nib that can be swapped out for any standard number six size nib. I mean, I like the fact that Majon has finally started offering medium nibs, and this one's very smooth and is getting juicier the more I write. But this pen might just demand an even broader nib. That's why before I inked the pen, I replaced the nib with my number six size Kaigaloo long blade and it fits perfectly so I might do that in the future but I'm enjoying writing with this medium uh, at the moment. Another thing I've sort of discovered I'm just discovering now is that the threads on this cap are a little bit wonky. They're a little bit sloppy. The more I cap and uncap this pen the more I tend to cross thread it. There it's cross threading just like that so it kind of wobbles around in there. So you have to be careful that you don't cross thread that cap. And if I replace that medium nib for this Kaigaloo long blade, the uh, gold tone on the Kaigaloo will actually match the hardware on the pen. That'll be another plus. And I really like the shutoff valve on this pen. It was one of the coolest features of this Opus 88 Bella, and it would be cool to see more companies making them. The biggest drawback of the eyedropper is the burping of the pen due to temperature and pressure changes. The only way to avoid an eyedropper from burping is to keep it full. And then, what's the point of having all that capacity when you're going to have to fill it all the time? This way, just keep that valve closed until you need to write, and then open the valve, allow some ink to flow into the section, and then close the valve again. I don't recommend leaving it open while you're writing because your hand will actually warm the air inside the pen and cause it to spit. As the air expands. And I don't understand why they call it burping with a pen. A burp is the expelling of air. If it was just air coming out, no one would mind. But when a pen burps, it expels ink, not air. My urine is in it. So when you burp your baby and air comes up, you say, good job. You know, that's breast milk. But when you burp your baby and formula spews all over your guests, you say, the baby spit up. Sir, no, wait, 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 wait. No, sir, don't, don't drink. You'd keep your mouth shut if you knew it was good for you, buddy. So I'm going to call it spitting from now on. Oh, and this one time at band camp, and what do I not like so much about this pen? Well, just to state the bleeding obvious, what the hell's with this clip? Make up your mind, Majon. A full clip that works or no clip at all. This halfway in, halfway out little nub of a clip just seems kind of silly on a large pen. Say it has a clip like this one on the X159. Now that wouldn't look half bad, would it? This thing looks like that little wide tie on Oliver Hardy. And why put a chrome nib on a pen with gold colored hardware? Beats me, just infuriates the OCD afflicted. Oh, it makes me mad. <laughs> and there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month. And I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you. for watching and that's all she wrote I made this